Hey, my name is Thomas, long time no see. There has been winter, there has been abysmal weather, uh, but now spring is back and so are my lens reviews. So today I've got this for you, the 7 Artisan 18mm f6.3 Mark II. Yes, 7 Artisans turned their UFO lens into a proper pancake lens with a focus ring. So let's have a go. So the concept of this lens is you don't have to adjust anything. It's a fixed aperture of 6.3 that should be good for most normal snapshot situations. And it's a fixed focus, at least it was on the first incarnation of this lens, the UFO. But this one has got a focus ring. So the thing is, you either turn it on infinity and you're good for any general shooting. Don't need to focus. Only when you get very close, then you can use the focus ring and you can go as close as 0.3 meters. I will show you that in a second. So overall, put it on infinity, turn on your camera and just frame and shoot. That's the idea. Uh, mechanical construction, there's not so much to say. This lens has a very nice solid metal mount. No electric contacts, of course. This is a manual lens, so no EXIF data is uh, transferred to the camera. That means if you want to use your IBIS, remember to set the focal length of your lens in the menu of your camera. So we've got only a focus ring and it has setting infinity and 0.3 meters. It has a hot stop at infinity. Hey, seven artisans can also do it. Very, very handy. You see, this lens is positively tiny. Well, the new lens, it doesn't say UFO anymore. It just says new. That's maybe a bit cheesy. I mean, in a year or two, it's not going to be new anymore. So what are they going to print on then? Newer or newest or most new or even more new. Yeah, that's a bit weird. But apart from that, this is a serial number and it's of course the 7 Artisans lens. The lens does not come with a front lens cap and it also doesn't have filter threads in that sense, you see? It only has this recessed thing here but you can't screw on a filter or anything. Uh, as you see the lens itself it's tiny but it comprises of six lens elements in four groups so it's a proper real lens. So let's find out now about performance. Let's do the brick ball shot for sharpness and also for distortion. So it's easy today because uh, I only need one single shot f6.3, no aperture range.
and let's get a bit closer. So I think now I'm at about 1.5 meters and uh, I tried to shoot it just on infinity. And now let's see if... Can you see it? I turned the focus ring to this instead of infinity. So let's see if that makes a difference. So now let's go closer. That's maybe a meter or so, or no, this is less, 50 centimeters. By 50 centimeters, I have the setting about here, just for your reference. That's a word about sharpness. As you can see in the broader central area, most of the frame is really super crispy sharp, as to be expected of an f6.3 lens. Uh, towards the borders and corners, sharpness goes off a little bit. Uh, if you look closely, you see the sharpness is still there, but there is field curvature going on. So when you shoot at infinity a landscape, the center at infinity is super sharp and the borders look a little bit soft, but uh, something that's in the foreground in the corners looks super sharp, field curvature. So keep that in mind, this lens is not the sharpest out there, but I would say it's on par with any kit zoom lens or anything like that. But if you really want a super high quality landscape lens, then of course this $59 lens is maybe not perfect. So you can see the lens produces a bit of a barrel distortion uh, around plus six in Photoshop should fix it. But I put the exact number uh, in the video once I have uh, uploaded my files to Lightroom and uh, corrected the distortion, but I think it should be around plus six. Two hundred thousand euros. They put this sign on the tree, and here is an explanation from the city of Cologne. And according to recent research or studies, the value of a big street tree like this in a city, over the course of its lifetime, is two hundred thousand euros. If you factor in that it produces oxygen, that it takes out CO two, that it improves. Uh, the atmosphere, whatever, all this, if you put a number to what the tree does for us, 200,000 euros, quite a high number if you ask me. So the question for every tourist is how far do you have to go down that little road, uh, street, um, to get the whole cathedral in your frame. And today I'm on a 28 millimeter equivalent lens, no, 27 millimeter equivalent lens, uh, 3.3 versus 2, 3 to 2, aspect ratio, you know what I mean. Um, your average iPhone lens is a 26 millimeter, so we have to step back a bit. Mm -hmm. From here it just fits, but it looks very tilted. Let's go a bit further. The picture gets better, but now we've got the bus in our way. <laughs> oh, oh, there's the car. 
Oh, the car is parking. From here, the perspective is nice and the cathedral is not that tilted, but again, you have the bus here. So, you see, it's not that easy. So I tell you something, let's move on. There is my secret spot where I love to take a cathedral picture. Either here, use the reflection. Or here. Go back a bit. Here you get even two cathedrals, no pedestrians and a cool perspective. Uh, so I told you normally you put this on infinity and you just shoot, but you can go close to 0.3 meters. I show you here. Um, but the problem is with f6.3 manual focus is not that easy because on your screen it always looks kind of in focus. So it's really hard to tell. That's why I would always suggest you put it on a focusing aid like focus peaking or something but you can get really close with this lens and that was not possible with the mark one with the ufo lens so this is a big big advantage and once you finish shooting your detail remember to put it back on infinity when you're shooting landscapes Did I mention this point and shoot? No worries about any settings. Like you're shooting one of these uh, throwaway cameras, you know, you, uh, that you could buy in the old days. Uh, 24 pictures on it and you just shot it and then you gave away the whole camera and you got back the pictures. And this is shooting like that, just point and shoot. Time for the verdict. This lens retails for 59 US dollars. In Europe, it's maybe a little bit more expensive. These days, Euro uh, prices are pretty high compared to US dollar. That's not only seven artisans fault. That's a general problem in 2023. For 59, yeah, it's hard to judge. I mean, you can spend 60, 70 dollars and you get lenses with like F2 specification or something like that. This is really basic. There is not even an aperture mechanism in it. Oh, by the way, did I mention that also means no sun stars because no aperture. Um, you always get only these rounded light bulbs. Um, but on the other hand, it's super tiny. This is, it's about the concept as well. It's executed very well. It has a nice mechanical construction. That's good. It's pretty sharp. Could have been even sharper, but hey, this is not the target group for this lens. You also shoot this to get a certain a little bit 
vintage look, not overdoing this. It's not a toy lens or something. It is a quality lens, but it gives you a certain vintage look in terms of corner sharpness and vignetting. Uh, the vignetting, of course, you can uh, adjust for in your Lightroom if you want to. Uh, sharpness, not so much, but it is pretty sharp. So overall, I had a lot of fun shooting this lens, and I think that's what a lens like this is about. If this speaks to you, then you should get it. And it's much, much, much more versatile than the first generation. It also doesn't have this kind of fun, but maybe also overdone UFO design. This looks just like a proper small pancake lens. Uh, the 0.3 meters close focus is a lot of fun. You even then get a lot of background blur. If you're in the mood, just I want to bring a camera, something more substantial than a phone, but I don't have any plan. I don't know how much I can spend for my photography for a certain trip or a day. Then just put on this lens. It doesn't weigh anything. It's just super cool, easy to shoot, fun, and it gives good results. So overall, thumbs up from me. I really like this one. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it maybe even useful. If you did so, then please leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. By the way, many, many thanks. I've passed 5,000 subscribers. Wow, what can I say? Many thanks for each and every one of you for supporting my channel. And um, apart from that, if you've got any questions or comments about this lens or anything else, uh, write something in the comment section below. I love to read all your comments and I will happily answer every single one of them. So that's it for today. Uh, have a great time, live long and prosper, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.